So in example number two, uh, we're given the function y equals one-third to the x power, and we're asked to create a table of values and graph the function, as well as find the y-intercept and state the domain and range. So for this function, what we want to start doing is creating a table similar to example problem number one, where we have x values of negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. This middle column that you don't actually usually see, but showing us evaluating this function to the x power, and the y value we get after evaluating one-third to the x. So if we look at this, if we take one-third to the negative two power, it's actually going to be similar to doing one over two, sorry, three to the negative two power, which actually takes that exponent from being in the denominator and moves it into the numerator so that it's going to be 3 to the second power or actually we get 3 to the second power being 9. Likewise, if we do it with x being negative 1, this will actually evaluate to be 3 to the negative 1 power which actually being negative to the negative exponent in the denominator moves it to the numerator 3 to the 1, which is actually 3. And as we continue, well, we know anything to the 0 power is always going to be 1, so not much work to do there. And we can continue doing 1 third to the 1 power is actually just going to be 1 third. And that if we do 1 to the 3 to the 2nd is actually going to be 1 ninth. And so these values might look very similar, but they're kind of different and changed when we use this fractional, this fraction as the base number. Now we can also graph these, similar to example problem number one, where we're going to take the coordinates negative 2, 9, and graph them. So negative 2, 9, graph the point negative 1, 3, graph the point 0, 1, graph the point 1, 1 third, and then 2 and 1 9 very close to 0 but not quite there. And we can sketch in the curve connecting these points, but realizing again we're actually never going to go below or be equal to 0 as a y value. So now that we have the table and we have the graph we can look at where the y-intercept will be y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis, so it's the point 0, 1. But with that y-intercept, abbreviating with y-int, is actually just the value 1. And similar to our example problem number 1, you can see that there is no restriction for the x's or our domain. It will continue all the way left and all the way right for infinity. So when we look at domain and range, that our domain, that our domain is once again all real numbers, and that our range is still very similar, that we will never actually with an exponent in a positive base, it's impossible to get the value for y being 0 or being any negative number. So when we go into this range, it has that same property that the y cannot be 0 or cannot be a negative number. So we can write that as y has to be greater than 0 but not equal to 0. 